Sometimes in a marriage, our daily routines and responsibilities can take over and get in the way of our romantic connection. On today's case, Ms. Kate says Mr. Johnson works so much that she feels like an unappreciated single parent. She says taking care of four boys with no help from him has really taken its toll on their relationship. Ms. Cates is in my courtroom today because she says something desperately needs to change. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Cates versus Johnson. Thank you very much. Ms. Cates, Mr. Johnson. Ms. Cates, you say your marriage has become stale and you've lost that emotional connection. You say you need my help to get that marriage back on track. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Johnson, you say the lack of communication has resulted in no intimacy and it's been a struggle. Your goal today is to address all issues and try to fix your marriage. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so it sounds like both of you have come into the courtroom solution-oriented, trying to figure out what you can do to get back to you. Is that right, Ms. Cates? Yes, Your Honor. Why are we in court today, ma'am? We are here due to the fact that I... I feel like we're lack of communication, mm -hmm. affectionate, and he does not support my dog rescue, and... We are just a day-to-day -day routine, and I'm just fed up. Mr. Johnson, you heard what your wife said. What do you say? I'm here because I love my wife and try to be a better husband and a better father. That's wonderful. Actually, you're coming in with the right attitude. You know, sometimes people come in divorce court and their marriage is irretrievably broken, but you both clearly, there's love there, and you want to be able to figure out how to communicate better so that the marriage is better. Ms. Cates, talk to me about how you met and what has led us to the point where the communication has broken down. I met him about 13 years ago. Uh, we lived on the same street. Uh, I threw a 4th of July party. Uh, I invited him over. And, you know, one thing led to another. I wound up kissing him in my front living room. One thing must have led to three others. Yeah, actually four others. <laughs> the following day, we wound up having sex. Um, I found out that he was a, vir a virgin. Um, oh. And I found myself wanting something other than what I had. I wanted to be with a man that had no other children, that did not have the baby mama drama. Mm -hmm. I wanted a life where there was no roller coaster that I was already in. And you thought to yourself, this is the perfect person. We can all start it out together. Yes. And so you all actually uh, have been together for 13 years. You've only been married for three years. Yes. But you do have four children together. Yes. We have a six, a seven, and a three and a four year old boys. Okay. All boys. Yes. Okay. So, Mr. Johnson, you heard what your wife said. It sounds like it started off all roses and daisies. Yes, ma'am, it did. And um, I met her because my uh, when my father had passed away, she was there with me. So you were dealing with some trauma in your family. Yes, ma'am. And Miss Cates was helpful during that time for you. Yes, ma'am, she was. And I understand. Ms. Cates had some past trauma herself. Yes. Having come through that trauma together, how do we get to a point where you don't think your husband makes you a priority? Um, Your Honor, he works from, like, 6 o'clock in the morning until probably 6, 7 o'clock at night. I stay home with the two younger children. Mm -hmm. um, we have the two older children that goes to school. And, like, when he comes home from work, like, I want the affection. I want to be like... I want him to tell me, well, how was your day? Like... You need engagement, is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, like, can I take the children off your hands so you can have you time or something like that, you know? I hey, just don't get it. Have you communicated that? I've tried. When the last time you had a date night, Miss Case? We do not have date night. We never have a babysitter for our four children. I have tried to make a date night. Um, 
Do but you cook dinner at Yes, home? I do. I actually cooked dinner for him about a couple weeks ago. I called him at work right before he got off, and I said, don't, don't go out and get no food. I made dinner at home. You did tell him? Yes. And he said, oh, I already stopped and got McDonald's. I said, well, that messes up my plans here, so I guess me and the children are just going to sit and eat dinner by ourselves. So, like, I was really mad. I was furious because, you know, I don't get to have dinner time. By the time he comes home and it's bedtime, you know, the kids get a bath between 7 and 7.30, bed between 8 and 8.30 because we got two olders that get up for school the next morning. We don't have time to communicate. We don't have time to have dinner, so I have to make it a point, well, okay, you're gonna get off at this time, well, dinner's gonna be at this time. That makes complete sense, but what was the problem when you communicated with him? Uh, he already had taken it up on his own to get dinner from McDonald's. Okay, but Miss Case, how was he supposed to know that you had decided to make dinner uh, Because I text him in between the day and be like, well, oh. this is what's gonna happen. Like, um, so if... you did put him on notice? Yes, I said, I'm making dinner tonight. Got it. So please do not stop and get McDonald's. Okay, and Mr. Johnson, what happened? And when I got the message, it was late because I don't get out of work till six o'clock and we're not really allowed to have our phones. So you job. didn't see the so message? So I didn't see the message. Do you get a lunch hour? Yes, that's at noon. Okay. So, Ms. Cates, in order to communicate with your husband when you know he's not able to uh, use his phone during the workday, but you know he has a lunch hour at noon, from noon to 1 o'clock, if you need to communicate something to him, that would be the time you need to put it in his phone. Don't you think that makes sense? Yes. And, Mr. Johnson, it's on you to look at your phone between noon and 1 because that's the time you have access to it yes, and make sure there's nothing you need to know at home. Yes, ma'am. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Everything has a solution if you both want to be solution-oriented. That's not hard. Something tells me that your intimacy clock is a little off kilter. He works, kids are at home. I mean, we, we just don't have time. I think it's really important for you to now start to make time. But with her, it's like jumping rope. She waits for me to make a move, but she doesn't make a move. Somebody got to make a move or Somebody no move will be made. What is hard is reestablishing intimacy. And Miss Cates, you say that's a big problem in your family. Yes. What's going on with that? So I have sciatic nerve. I've had six C-sections. Oh. So, like, I take medication. Mm -hmm. um, and when he comes home, I understand, you know, he, he needs that time, but, like, I want that time, too. Fair. Okay. Um, we put the boys to bed between, like I said, 8 and 8.30. So by 9 o'clock, the I, little ones are asleep. Yes, or at least halfway almost asleep. At least know? in the bed. Yes. Then, like, I take nighttime medicine. Mm -hmm. So, like, sometimes I have to double it up to get to sleep. But, like, one night I, I got in the shower. All the kids were in bed early, you know. It was a great time. I got out of the shower. I came in butt naked. And he was already asleep. I, and, you know, that made me feel like, okay, what, what's going on here, you know? So, in other words, you were trying to set up a little bit of a romance. Yes. And um, he, by the time you came out of the shower, he was already knocked out. Yes. So, something tells me that your intimacy clock is a little off kilter. Yes. So, here's the thing. You don't have to always schedule, but when you know that the children are going to bed early... That's a good opportunity to schedule. But with her, it's like jumping rope. She wait for me to make a move, but she doesn't make a move. It's somebody got to make a move or no move got... will be made. <laughs> Nobody make a move. So how did you all used to initiate intimacy back when you were just dating, Miss Cates? We would just, you know, it, whatever. Let's, you... let's go. Let's go to the room. You know. Right. But you know, we got four boys. We don't 
there ain't time to be like, oh, well, hey, let's go, you know? He works, kids are at home, I mean, we, we just don't have time. I think it's really important for you to now start to make time. You pick the day. You tell me what day works the best. You say it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and that doesn't mean that's the only day, but that means that's the definite day. You have to make time for each other. Make it a game. Make it fun again. Put the spark back in between. There's love here. I don't see a problem with love. Y'all love your boys. All is well. You are being good examples to them. Yes, ma'am. They see love. They want to see love. Your boys need to see you being affectionate with their mom and your mom enjoying the affection. You see what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. Pick the day. Which day y'all picking? I want Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday. You want three days? Yes. She wants three days. Come on now, Mr. Johnson. Some say your wife love you. <laughs> she wants three yeah. days. Yes, ma'am. She can have it. Look at that. See that? Look at that extra spark that just came back. Just tell him what you want, ma'am. That's your man. Tell him what you want, because I know... I ever ask is her to tell me what she wants. Well, she just told you. Tuesday, Saturday, <laughs> and Sunday. <laughs> yeah, you got to put your big boy pants on now. Mm -hmm. I have a dog rescue. I had 47 dogs in my house. He just feels that there's not enough space. Do you not just hear what the I said? I said no! Why were you so irritated, Mr. Jones? It's too much. She love her animals, but it comes a point, is it a family or dog? If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Ms. Cates, I understand there's also a conflict as to an activity that goes on in your house. Yes, I have a dog rescue. Now, did you all talk about that? Because that's a very big undertaking for a family. So, when we met, I had 47 dogs in my house. Wow. They all knew their kennels. They knew how, like, which kennel was theirs. You know, they were very well trained. How big is your house? Uh, I had a five-bedroom house when we met. Wow. And, you know, he would see me walking down with five, six dogs on a lead together. Right. And then we, you know, we got to talking and he actually took in one of my dogs that I had rescued. But the more we got together, the more that we me became official, mm -hmm. you know, the more he got irritated. Um, we went from having a big house to a two bedroom house. Now you know you can't have 47 dogs. No, I actually, I actually have a couple pictures of my rescue dogs and some of my personal dogs. And what's going on with the... Is that a snake? Yes, I have three personal snakes. I got a ball python and a Columbia red tail boa that is about eight feet long. And In a two-bedroom apartment? A two-bedroom house. house? With a basement. My dogs stay in my basement or, you know, and... Or, you know, what's the... Or, you know. The yard. I have a nice-sized yard. I have two yards. He just feels that there's not enough space. And I feel that if I'm not pushing you or me or my kids out of their space, then you should not have nothing to say. So here's my question. And I also have a voice recording of him yelling at me. Uh-oh. About these animals? Yes. You submitted it as yes, evidence? Yes, I did. I'd like to hear it. This is not Captain Save the Dog World. Let's think about other things besides dogs, okay? Do you not just hear what the f I said? I said f no! That means no! No, 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 no! The dog's not coming to my house. The dog's not standing on my walk. The dog's not even going to enter my door. It's the answer, no! Wow. The answer is no, Miss Cates. He don't want no dogs. Yes. He's upset about the dogs. It's interesting, Mr. Johnson seems very mild-mannered, but he was irritated. Yes. Why were you so irritated, Mr. Johnson? It's too much. It's just too much. Uh, the money, no, 
you know. How is no, it impacting no on money your family? And no space. How's it impacting on your family financially? Uh, it's impacting us a lot. And how I, how much do you spend? Five, six hundred, maybe a thousand dollars. To take dogs to the rescue, to get them fixed. Yeah. Miss Kate. I mean, I understand she loves her animals. Mm-hmm. But it comes to a point, is it a family or dogs? And I love my dog. But Miss Cates, you have a family dynamic that you get to stay at home, and Mr. Johnson is the one that has to go out and earn the living for the family. He shouldn't have to bear the burden of this extra expense um, on the family. He is not the only one that pays for my vetting. I well, get income, too. Okay. But is the income being used to take care of all the dogs, or does he have to put in money to he do that? He does have to help out with some, yes. So, Ms. Cates, in all honesty... And Animal Control told her to leave the dogs, let the dogs be. If they out there free, let them be free. Instead of picking up a dog, nor you don't have the space in a two-bedroom house. So, Robert, Animal Control is going to step in in a minute. Uh, a lot of dogs in the, in the house. I've seen it all the time with neighbors and stuff, and I'm surprised they haven't come to your house already. They have. They, they just don't do nothing because Animal Control is full. So, Miss Cates, you said you have a pretty good sized yard. Yes. You're going to need to limit what this project is, and I'm going to tell you why. Because your commitment to the animals is pushing your husband away. Because for this mild mannered man who works like a dog for his family and loves doing that, to turn into this cussing person that I heard on the audio tape, that means you pushed him to the edge. And I don't want to see you push him out the door because you have four children and you don't want to lose your husband. So I think you need to limit the project that you're working on and try to figure out a compromise because this man and those children, they don't need to live in a house that's a menagerie. The animals that you have presently, you shouldn't be adding to it. It's not a zoo in your house. It's a home. And I think you are replacing the affection that you're missing from your husband with this need to obsessively collect animals. So yeah, I just put some right. stuff in place to help you all get back to the affection. And if you are hitting it every Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday, you ain't got time for no more dogs, child. You're going right. to be busy. <laughs> You're going to be negotiating with four boys. You're going to be cooking. You're going to be taking care of your husband. You're going to be spending 30 minutes a day just catching up with each other, having conversation. You're not going to need to fill your day with more animals. So just like I asked for the days, Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday, okay. and I told Mr. Johnson, it's time for him to put on his big boy pants. You have to put on your big girl panties and ask for what you want and make your commitment to your husband again. That's what your job is. It's time for you to be a wife and not Miss Cates, the dog rescuer. Rescue this marriage, Miss Cates. That's your man over there. And you don't want to lose him, am I right? All right. And you're not trying to give him up to somebody else? No. Because something tells me anybody that's asking for Tuesday, Saturday, and mm. Sunday says to herself, if you can beat me rocking, you can take my chair. Am I right, Miss Cates? Right. Go rock your world. <laughs> okay, they can make it. Yes. But those snakes, they gotta go. Oh, that, well, some of those animals gotta go, man, because uh, that's a lot of work. A whole lot of work and a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. And oh boy, got some work to do. Oh, absolutely. I have a couple of energy drinks you could drink. I know. Tuesday, mm -hmm. Saturday, and Sunday. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs>
made in Georgia.